Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining. My name is Agustin Benito. Uh, and we will talk today a little bit about uh, metrics. Um, I'm an experienced manager in open and remote environments. I've uh, been around open source for quite some time now, over 17 years. Uh, I have worked in several open source organizations. And currently, I'm working at Daimler Group Services Madrid for Ambition. Ambition is a Daimler subsidiary that, uh, where we create the next generation vehicle platforms for uh, Mercedes-Benz. And we use a combination of our uh, inner source program and an agile framework, a pretty cool setup, where we work together with our suppliers and also Daimler itself. Um, I like metrics, obviously, and you can read uh, more about what I like in my blog. So, I, there used to be a time in which I, I truly believe in this idea, uh, summarized by this African proverb, if you want to go fast, go alone, and if you want to go far, go together. Over time, working at different companies, I realized that this proverb uh, encapsulates an or relation. Uh, an exclusive relation between uh, the traditional business mindset of where efficiency, speed, effectiveness, cost is the important point and the traditional open source mindset where it's all about collaboration, it's all about near-term, long-term goals. Um, so in, in, in business environments when you're doing open source, the whole point is about can we go fast by going together? Can we mix both worlds? And the truth is that it's not a very uh, intuitive idea, especially when you talk with uh, decision makers, this idea of collaborating, increasing the number of interactions, growing, and at the same time being efficient, being effective, keeping costs under control, uh, keeping uh, the number of, of developers uh, low in order to go faster. This is, this is a trend, right? Um, and the, I think that throughout the years, what I've been trying to, to demonstrate is that you can go far uh, by going together, uh, which uh, I would turn into another uh, African proverb, right? If you want to go far together, it's faster. Now, how to do this is a problem, right? And I think that inner source has a very interesting position to, uh, a role to play there, establishing an and relation between efficiency, between effectiveness, between cost control, um, between speed and collaboration. And the question is how to do it. And in, in, my, in my experience, this, this can work. Um, first of all, we need a different uh, set of metrics. We need to combine two groups of metrics, the traditional collaboration and community health metrics with business impact metrics, focusing, on my opinion, on product delivery process performance ones. The idea is that you, you try to correlate both metrics and you focus all your actions, all your decisions, you prioritize those that creates a positive relation between those groups of metrics. Then you establish your whole uh, reporting strategy about that positive correlation between uh, both groups of metrics. And then you turn your story upside down instead of focusing on collaboration in order to reach a, a positive business impact, it's about creating business impact at scale through open collaboration. So let me go through the first couple of points, this idea of two different groups of metrics and how you positively correlate them. So I talked before about one of the groups of metrics being collaboration and community health metrics. I have very little to say there that you probably don't know uh, in this forum. All I will say is that uh, if you do not know about these metrics, there is an open source project called Chaos that tries to establish a best baseline for these kind of metrics. I really recommend you to take a look. And when we think about the delivery uh, process performance metrics, um, there are two that are essential ones, which are stability and throughput, and I recommend you to start by those two. Uh, stability, it's a combination of two measures, change failure rate and failure recovery time, while throughput is a combination of lead time and frequency, although for simplicity, I recommend to start 
with time interval instead of frequency. Um, why these two metrics? Well, when you think about a software product development and delivery or any technology, you think about flow and these two characteristics, uh, sorry, these two metrics characterize the performance of a system that process a flow of elements, in this case, a flow of information, of software. They are widely used, not just uh, in this field, but in others. And I think that the main reason is that they can be applied both at system level and locally and also across different kind of projects. So they are ideal for inner source programs. They use simple units. They are fairly easy to measure. And if you are passionate about continuous delivery, well, you can claim if you are entirely metrics, uh, if you apply entirely metrics focus, that uh, those two metrics, stability and throughput, uh, can be positively correlated when applying continuous delivery principle and practices. And once we have talked a little bit about both group of metrics, let me put a very simple, uh, almost stupid example about how you can correlate both. Let's, uh, let's assume for a second that we're going to focus on a very small subset of metrics, new contributors. We are trying to increase the number of contributors of our, uh, to our uh, inner source pro project. Uh, and then we're going to think about throughput, but especially stability is easier for this example. We are, we are imagining or we are assuming that we have an ideal delivery system. We are creating a, operating, a small operating system for some devices. Uh, so this is all about getting the point, not accuracy. And we have put effort and budget to uh, achieve a goal. And that goal is to increase by 20% the number of new contributors for this uh, little product that we are creating uh, within our inner source program. And throughout the time, we are seeing that the change failure rate is growing, which basically means that the stability of our overall uh, delivery process is decreasing, which might be expected at the beginning, but not over time, since we are talking about professionals that know what they're doing. So what we are seeing as the, after achieving our 20% uh, increase uh, in new contributors goal is that there is a negative correlation between new contributor, our uh, collaboration and uh, community health uh, metric, and the uh, business impact metrics, in this case, stability and throughput, since stability and throughput are positively correlated, one goes down, the other one goes down too. So what we do in our project is basically analyze throughout the delivery process what we have done and what could have done better or what we should be changing in order to achieve that positive correlation. Let's assume for a second that we knew we wanted to bring more contributors. So we streamlined our merge request process and also our peer review. So we can absorb all, we could absorb all that newcomers uh, frictionless. And then we also thought, you know, we're going to need more test benches. We're going to need more uh, boards. We're going to need to test more. So we need to parallelize all our tests and improve our testing phase. Again, also the release and the deployment stages were also improved. But for some reason, when we dig uh, deeper, we realized that at the integration stage, we didn't do all the uh, improvements that we should. And, and digging even more, we realized that before we had four of a train of four or five commits uh, waiting for the build to be triggered. And let's imagine for a second that our builds take a couple of hours to take place and we, we trigger those builds every hour. So we, we have around eight to 10 builds per day. But after we bring all these new people and we have increased efficiency in the merge request, in the, test, in the peer review um, uh, activities, we now have 10 to 12 uh, commits in, in the train waiting for the, uh, to trigger the build. So actually, since the developers are testing their code in isolation first, and these are the stages where that code is tested, the interactions between new code coming in and the old code, uh, the existing code are test, we realize that the more interactions we are putting into, we, we, we have the, the, you know, the more possibilities the builds have and the acceptance tests have to fail. 
So what is happening here is that in the integration stage, the change failure rate is growing. So obviously the, the stability uh, it's in, is decreasing, which basically means that um, in order to improve the whole process, we, we might have uh, to use a different approach. Instead of maybe using all the resources and the budget to increase the 20% the, the rate, we should have, say, some time and, and, and effort and money to streamline this build uh, process by, for example, using different techniques, parallelizing builds or uh, using a better uh, build cache or uh, triggering builds more often by increasing build power. In other words, what we want is a positive correlation between this new contributor metric and this stability and throughput metrics, so we can report about it. In summary, collaboration within a commercial organization matters more if it has a positive impact in business. And to take and evaluate decisions, combine those two groups of metrics, the collaboration and community health metrics that you're using today with throughput and stability, and you use both two, so you prioritize those decisions and actions that produce a positive correlation between these two groups of metrics. You report, especially to managers, based on such positive correlation, and you turn your story upside down. It's about getting business impact through collaboration. I have included in the slide deck a couple of tables with additional metrics based on your requests in Slack, and basically, I have very little more to say. It's just about thanking the organizers for having me here and you for attending. Thank you very much.